Hello and welcome to Cooking Club, the Independent Chef. I'm Simone, FFRN's own chef extraordinaire. Just kidding, I actually have no formal training in this area whatsoever, but I do really like to cook and bake. So I'm here to show you and teach you how to make some food for yourself and your friends and family. Uh, we're really excited to get connected and uh, get started. So this program is similar to our cooking club program that we normally do in person, um, but obviously it's now adapted for online. And this is now intended for teens 13 to 18 years old, as we're going to talk about and show you some kitchen skills and some kitchen basics. We're gonna also learn some basic food safety so that you don't poison yourself or anyone else. So together, we're gonna to learn how to make some delicious food and I'll even throw in some tips and tricks about budgeting and grocery shopping. So we're gonna start simple and throughout the episodes, work our way up to some more challenging recipes. So what comes first, the chicken or the egg? It's the egg because that's what we're doing today. So, um, eggs are really great. They are packed full of lots of uh, vitamins and nutrients. They've got lots of protein in there. They've got riboflavin, vitamin B12, and a bunch of others. So most of that is contained in the yolk, which is the yellow part of the egg. The egg also has the whites, which is obviously the white part of the egg. And then there's also this thing that has a really cool name in the egg that I just learned about. It's the little stringy thing that's attached to the yolk, and that is called the calaisi. Cool, eh? Uh, that actually just helps to anchor the yolk in the center of the whites when it's sitting in the egg. And the fresher the egg, the more prominent that calaisi. So now, about freshness, you might be wondering, well, how long do eggs normally last? So typically, it can be anywhere between three to five weeks if stored properly in the fridge. So how to do that? Is you're going to keep it in its lovely container and you're going to stick it in the fridge on the shelf. Don't put it on the door as the temperature fluctuates too much with every time you open and close the door in the fridge. Uh, a good thing to keep in mind is every carton of eggs will have a best before date on it and usually it's going to be five to six weeks um, from when you purchase it. So keep an eye out for that. Um, Oh, there's a super easy way to test if your eggs are actually still fresh. So what you can do is you're just going to take your egg and I've got a big jug of water here. You can even just use a small glass and you're going to take that egg and you're just going to really gently plop it in there. If it goes to the bottom like this one did, then your egg is still fresh. If it's kind of floating halfway up or even floating at the top, your egg is not fresh anymore and you should probably just throw it out. So eggs can also come in two different colors. You've got white eggs and you've got brown eggs. Is there a difference? On the inside, not at all. The color of the shell is actually just dictated by the breed of the chicken, nothing else. But there are a few different kinds of eggs that you can buy at the grocery store. So you've got your standard white or brown eggs, which are typically caged chickens. Then you have cage-free eggs. And those can either be free range or free run. You might say either of those on carton. You can also get organic eggs, which just means that the chickens have been fed organic food. And then you can get omega-3 eggs. They just have extra omega-3 in them. And that's by feeding those chickens a lot more flaxseed. And then you can also buy uh, cartons of egg whites. If say you have a recipe that just uses whites and you don't know what to do with the yolks. So your typical kind of white eggs will cost about 25 cents each or about $3 for a dozen. That's your average price. Uh, the most expensive then is going to be your organic free range eggs and they can be about 52 cents an egg or even up to $7 for a dozen. So more than double in price. So when you're looking at recipes and you need to use eggs, typically it'll just call for one egg or two eggs, um, but eggs can come in different sizes. So these ones are large eggs. You can also get small, medium, and extra large. So in a recipe that calls for eggs, usually they're requesting a large egg, and usually it'll tell you otherwise. 
So eggs do carry the risk of having salmonella. So it's best that you cook your eggs fully to make sure that you kill off any of that bacteria. So salmonella is just a bacteria that can cause uh, food poisoning and just make you very sick. So you wanna to try to avoid that. Uh, as well, if when you're working with eggs and if you touch the raw egg, you should also wash your hands after to avoid cross-contamination with anything else. And try not to eat things that have raw egg in them, such as cookie dough or you know things like that. So speaking of some safety, let's do some basic kitchen safety before we even get started. So anytime you're in the kitchen, you should make sure that you wear an apron. It just helps to protect your clothes from any splatters and things like that. Also, no long sleeves or baggy sleeves as it can catch on things or when you're cooking over a burner, leaning into the oven, it can catch fire. So that's a safety hazard. As well, if you have long hair, we're gonna make sure that we tie it back, keep it out of the way, as no one likes having hair in their food. And lastly, we're gonna wash our hands. So we're gonna wash them really well for at least 20 seconds. So I'm gonna do that. Now we are ready to go, so let's get cracking. We're gonna start with some soft boiled and hard boiled eggs. So what you're gonna need is a small pot, preferably with a lid. You're gonna need two eggs. And I've got one in my container already, so I'll just add that in. And you're going to add some water to your pot to fully cover the eggs with about an extra inch on top. So we're gonna put them all together and then we're gonna cook it. Excellent. So now we're gonna take our pot and we're gonna put it on the stove and put it on high heat and wait until it gets to a big rolling boil. This might take a while. A tip is if you do have a lid, you can plop it on top as that'll help make your water boil just a little bit faster. All right, once it reaches a rapid boil, you're gonna turn off your burner, remove your pot from the stove, and for soft boiled eggs, we're gonna let it sit for four minutes. So we'll set our timer for four minutes. If I can figure out how to use a timer. is up. So we're going to remove the lid. We're going to take out one of our eggs for our soft boiled egg. We're going to put it in a bowl. We're going to let our hard boiled egg cook for a little bit longer. So up to 12 minutes. So we're going to do eight minutes more. When you remove the eggs, put them into a bowl or a cup or something and you're gonna run cold water over the egg until it's cold to the touch. This stops the egg from continuing to cook and stops that kind of funny green ring from forming around the yolk that you may have seen in some eggs.
let that sit in the cold water for a little bit while we wait for our hard boiled egg to finish. All right, so now our hard boiled egg should be ready to go. So we'll take it out and we're going to do the same as we did with that soft boiled egg, run it under cold water until it's cold to the touch. So you can see our soft boiled egg, the inside is definitely a little bit squishier, not quite as light yellow colored as our hard boiled egg. So you can scrape these out onto a sandwich if you want, uh, or just sprinkle them with some nice salt and pepper and eat it with a spoon, however you like. And that's how you do soft boiled eggs and hard boiled eggs. If you like our videos and want to see more, please just hit subscribe, subscribe and check out our YouTube for more great videos.